Yo, yo, yo. Am I coming through loud and clear, Print Fam? How you doing? What's happening? All that good stuff. Um, I'm actually not ready to go live yet, so you guys just hang in the chat, and then I'm going to come back and say what's up to you. Uh, in the meantime, I got Rob here, and the show hasn't officially started. So, Rob, if you could just chime in, and we can make sure that they hear our audio before we get started. Just say what's up to them. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. All right, guys. Did you hear Rob's voice? Are we more or less on the same audio levels? Let us know in the chats, and I'm going to step away for a sec. Right back. All right, guys, did you hear Rob? Rob was a little bit louder, but clear as a bell. Hey, Rob. Yeah. Is there is there a way to turn your audio down on your end or your mic or something? Uh, yes, I can. Because uh... I think what's going to end up happening is um, your audio, for some reason, is going to drown mine out. So it's going to be really hard for me to, you to mean ask questions. But yeah, the receiving end, this... just turn it down. Yeah. Yeah, well, your just your microphone. If there's a way to do that, just a little bit, maybe turn it down twenty five percent. All right, if it's possible. If not, it's cool if you're louder. Um. All right, guys. Well, I'm really excited today. I think I got all not all the bugs, but I think we got the majority of the bugs worked out. Uh, so we're gonna be able to move forward to places that I want to go. I'm really excited about it. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go through and do my what's ups to everybody. So let me get in here and do that. Uh, starting at the top, huh? Who's, who's in the house? Standard Graphics was here first. It's good to see you, my man. Uh, oh, you know, he's not sure if he's actually going to make it. Prototype 8 is here as always. Beard Booze is in the house. Thank you for my uh, care package, dude. That was awesome. However, it's funny you sent it now because I was planning on, I was planning on ditching the thing here very shortly. Uh, oh, hey guys, can you do me a favor too? And you know the routine, just share, 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 share the living shit out of it, so that uh, we can get a lot of viewers here. We got Rob in the house. It's going to be a good show, so I want to make sure everybody tunes in. So just share the living crap out of it, uh, and I'm going to continue on share with my what's up. ups. Share it up, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Inking Zinc, you can do it. Uh, Mark Garland, Eric Melling, Hotbox Print Studio. What's up, dude? Jason Enns is here. Uh, who else is in the house today, man? We got a lot of people. Jay, you guys have been conversing pretty heavily, haven't you? Ulysses Juarez, Delph the White Bull, MJ Vent, Ooh, American CJ's Eagles Place. Printing. That's a that's one that I America recognize there. Yeah. You know American Eagle? No, I don't know personally, but I've heard of them. They're pretty sick. <laughs> right on, man. Just rad. Uh, who else you got? All together. <laughs> William Center's here. Uh, Clippo's here. Mark Garland, Tony Cassidy. You can do it. Uh, who else? Native Minds Alive. Never seen you here before. Welcome. Make Stuff is here. On Point Designs is here. Ryan Hawley. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? So many of you guys, man. Well... I feel like I made it through pretty well. We got got in here a little bit late, and I just kind of want to get the show started because it's Valentine's Day, uh, and got shit to do after this. So we're just gonna get it moving. Uh, let me get into the right. Let me get into my holding screen. God damn it! All right, there's my wait screen. There we go. There's the wait screen. I'm gonna count down maybe 30 seconds, and then we'll get this bad boy started. Uh, yeah, you guys, I'm really excited to have this one work because 
It's going to be good podcast content. The more I look into it, the more I realize a lot of you guys are consuming the audio version on iTunes or Google Play. That thing is actually starting to take off. So I feel like we need to have really good content uh, audibly, you know, so that people can just listen without having to watch it. Because apparently a lot of people are consuming it that way. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. We're going to go radio silence for a few seconds. High energy. What's going on, Print Fam? It's your boy Cam. Welcome back to the Print Life Live podcast, where we talk screen print news, and then we talk screen print and business, and then at the end of that, I do my best to answer your screen print questions. Now, well, first off, happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Hope you have a good one. And here's what's happening today in the Print Life. Uh, as usual, we're going to run down our news. Uh, we're going to start with the Print Life Facebook group shop shoutouts. Because other than that, I don't got any industry news for you. Uh, once we're done with that, we have a very special guest. It is Rob from The Shirt Peddler. And he is here to talk about the benefits of used <coughs> screen printing equipment. And then finally, we're going to do our, uh, our live Q&A. And today, because we have a guest, we're going to let Rob chime in on that stuff. So... Let's just get started right into it. I'm going to open up the Facebook news feed. I've already, um, wait, did I? I think I already filtered it out. No, not yet. News. Okay, so I'm filtering it out for people that have put news of some sort in the title. And that's who I'm going to be reading from. So we're going to start at the top. We got Andy Smith, and he's got his news. They've officially made the switch to 100% water-based ink. Oh, wow. So they've... Completely dropped Plasticol off their roster. Congratulations, man. Hopefully it goes well for you. Uh, and they're going to be using pretty much Green Galaxy across the board. Right on, man. That's a good move, I think. Cool. Um, we got Gene LaRose. They've got their new equipment, and they just finished setting up the shop. They already have a few orders due to this uh, screen printing as a side hustle, but they're hoping to make it a full-time gig. Let's zoom in on their photos here. Nice, dude. Very, very cool. Uh, Kevin Gunn, they got a good three-color print with his new press done today. No underbase. Damn, there's no underbase on that? Must have hit that green like at least two times. Looks good, man. Uh, Sean Brown is having an awesome friend come through tomorrow morning to plumb water and drainage into his garage for a washout booth. Yeah, dude, I've seen that craziness you've been dealing with, Sean, so that's going to be a nice upgrade for you. Make life a bunch easier. A uh, bunch easier? That's a great choice of words. Make life a lot easier for you. Uh, who else we got? Joshua Whitlow. Nine color backs, done. Five color fronts, done. Uh will be done by 10, 10, 30-ish. Good job, buddy. Let's, he's got a video here. Let's see if it plays on this live thing. That's nah, not going to show. Oh, they're printing on an MHM. Looking good. No audio, so we can't really do that. It's a big shop. They got an MHM running. I don't know how many colors is on that thing, but they're, they're crushing it. Rule Gratis Maxwell. Raul. Ra Ra Bought a four-station, four-color press on Amazon. From Happy Buy. Looks like we got a picture here. Oh, he's assembling it right now. Very cool. Oh, yeah, dude. I remember buying something like that. Works pretty good. Congratulations. And Jamie Lineback. They've moved. Found a duplex down the street with a shed in the back. Got electricity in the shed. And they set up their washout booth outside. They got a dark room. Uh, and it's basically ready for production. Let's take a look at what you got. And as far as I know, you're moving out of your house, right? So that's really badass. That's a cool little space. Congratulations, Jamie. Uh, we got Randy Hernandez. Finally got the space repainted. New drywall on the ceiling. Oh, shit. Oh, damage from Irma. 
And oh, basically, he bought the stuff you, so he's really excited to start praying. C congratulations, Randy. That's amazing. Um, Curtis King. Curtis King officially has a shop. No more printing from home. They got a 1,300 square foot building. Uh, they've been looking for a while now. They got a good deal on the rent, so they made the jump. That's and they're going to start moving in the 15th. So congratulations. That's pretty good, good, right, Rob? That's really good square footage. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Awesome. Uh, who else we got here? Kenneth Fisher. Fisher Screen Printing and Vinyl. Here's proof that you don't need a lot of money to get started doing what I call the nasty laughing my ass off i call it the nasty because everything in this 10 by 13 room was purchased on the cheap so let's see what we got here and i know you guys can't see the photos but yeah he's just kind of rigged his it reminds me of my first little print studio so cool uh, well congratulations kenneth keep doing your thing man juan cortez uh 20 to 30 20 by 23 screens most of them are in good shape. Doesn't need them anymore. That's a classified ad. That is not news. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hustle in there. Oh, yeah. um, Mark Ripley. I feel like, we're, dude, we're working on our... A lot of good news, though. Feel it. A lot of good news, man. Oh, here we go. So I know I, I can never get his goddamn name right, but it's Lino Koto. If that is your real name and I'm saying it right, then that shit, dude, that just flows. It's so good. But they started working on their website in November, uh, and they have officially launched it on Monday. So really happy for them. So you can check out Hale Inc. That's H-A-L-E-I-N-K dot com. And uh, you can go, you know, hijack their style. Uh, who else we got? Daniel Barunda. Kind of for Cam, uh, he was wondering about Amazon 20 watt lights, 30 second exposure. Yes, I said 32 watts in my video, but that's my mistake. Oh, so you were the one that was talking about kind of retrofitting an existing exposure unit with those LEDs. Um, we'll dive into that later. That's not really new. That's like kind of like, I don't know, tips and tricks maybe. Do a video on it. Uh, Juan Cortez got a 1430 printer for about 50 bucks at Staples, and it works perfectly. I wonder if you're using AccuRip with that. Uh, Kevin Gunn, this is a good one because he ordered a 6x6 press made in China for $1,211, including shipping from Cali. Uh, and he posted earlier in the week, some discussions got heated, so he deleted the original post. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. Why y'all hating on the man? Wonder what happened. Yeah, chill out. Jeez, just take let a chill pill, game. guys. Let him use game. Yeah, dude, I I bought a fucking Chinese flash and I got no hate. Uh, I know this will not last it forever, works but then use it, you know. Yeah, it's great, man. Uh, major step up from yeah, dude. I I think it's cool that you got it, Kevin. So fucking keep rocking out on that thing. And uh, as a matter of fact, dude. If everything goes well, you hit me up and um, maybe we can do some kind of little video collab to talk about it. Okay. And y'all that was y'all that was talking shit on him, that shame on you, Brian Buffka. What do we got here? Uh, that's not that's nothing. Okay, I think that's about it, guys. Everything uh, shop news from February the seventh. So that was last week. So I think we made it through pretty well. Hopefully, I. Touched on everyone's news who was trying to get featured today. Uh, keep that stuff coming, man. I really like doing that shop news. I like doing the little shop shout outs because it gives everyone a little chance to shine. So so keep it coming. Make sure to keep posting it on the Print Life Facebook group. And if this is your first time here, in case you didn't know, uh, send a request to the Print Life Facebook group. Uh, and then once you're accepted, you can post your shop news and I will you know, shout you out on the live show. Uh, anyway, let's get out of this thing. Um, what else we got to do, guys? I feel like that's pretty much it for the news. So it's time to move on to the business slash uh, interview. And we're going to bring my man Rob in here. I got to switch screens because I got like a dual screen setup. So here we go. Rob, are you ready? Ready. All right, let's, let's bring it. you in. Yep, yeah, there he is. Now, you guys, let me know in the chat if you can see him before we actually get this started because this is a – first time we're pretending like this is our first time doing this 
I might delete the next one if this one goes better. Uh, so is uh, Rob coming through? Can you guys hear him? Let us know in the chat. What's up, uh, yeah, say what's up, Rob. Um, actually, before you do that, man, I'm just going to um, ask you the first question right away. Because you answered this last time, but didn't go so well because there was no audio. So we're just going to ask you just real briefly how you actually got started in the screen printing industry. The abridged version. Yeah, so um, I was in the skateboarding industry before working for a skateboard company. And uh, things kind of just uh, went a different direction and uh, was in Orange County, and I was from San Luis Obispo, so I had like moved down there to um, work for this company, and things were going in a different direction. So I ended up, uh, you know, uh, leaving that company and then uh, coming back to San Luis Obispo uh, from Orange County, and uh, just needed a job. So basically, uh, went and looked at a screen printing shop that was doing our work when we were still located in uh, San Luis Obispo, and uh, mm -hmm. knew the owners pretty well well enough to walk in and ask for an application and ask for a job and um, pretty much hired me on the spot so i was kind of like lucky put my skateboard up against the wall and walked and, and you and you had no experience and they hired you yeah no experience at all like <clears throat> the only Damn, really experience lucky. i had was just like maybe like going to a screen printing shop and just watching people like print manually like um yeah but never no no auto experience at all like and this shop was fully automated. It had like a toss, 12 color, fully automated at the time. This is like mm. 98, well, 97, 97-ish. So they had a really nice. good like full automated 12 color, like, to, uh, no, it was MHM. Okay. And uh, they worked with Newman Roller Frames and they had their, their shit together. They were rocking and rolling. They were doing a bunch of like high volume stuff, so... Pretty so much your entry, there. your your entry into the industry was like right into more or less a contract shop that was doing big jobs, a lot of machinery going on. Yeah, that's how you that's how you got introduced, more or less. Right, pretty much. Like before that, years before that, I'd walk into like locally owned like uh, skateboard companies slash like printing their own stuff manually. So mm -hmm. to see a big press yeah. like that was like. Oh man, this is crazy! You know, this is how they yeah. do like high volume screen printing. So, yeah. pretty much got into that, catching shirts and reclaiming. Learned how to stretch screens on Newman roller frames. If anyone's yeah. ever stretched screens on Newman roller frames, they're they're kind of technical. You got you kind of have to do everything in in like a certain order to make the screen stretch properly. And so it was a huge learning curve. But basically, had to learn that in like literally like two days damn my dude i can never get the, the hang time of was it. like i need you to like strip all of these old ones down there's 30 of them and then remesh them with these certain mesh counts tomorrow i'm gonna show you how yeah. to do it i'm like okay <laughs> so i learned yes. I, I i fucked up a bunch but you know eventually i got them so that's awesome oh actually somebody from um actually it's sean from hotbox print studio he wants me to ask you what were some of the skate companies you were you were working with or dealing with at that time? Oh, um, completely so, off a of screen printing topic, but yeah, you know, I mean, why not? It was a it was a company called Scarecrow Skateboards, and they were located in San Luis Obispo, and then we relocated to Orange County, which um, at that time was um, we merged in with another company, and um, yeah, so I mean, it, it was a uh, it was a small cool uh, skateboarding company that was like yeah. uh probably one of my favorites still to this time um yeah you know my obsession with screen printing came from that industry man i i don't know me too <laughs> as a as a kid it's all like i think a lot of people don't realize the power of logos right and i remember oh. at that time just like even early companies early on like uh dc or zero and even like the more obscure ones like split i would see the logos and i was just drawn to them yeah and that's that's really where my obsession with especially graphic design came from was from the skateboarding industry specifically right yeah it, yeah man, it, you know, like stuff like Santa Cruz skateboard, like logos, yeah. like anything from like independent truck company, like oh, yeah. Al Peralta back in the day. They just really had cool graphics and just all that original line artwork. Like, uh -huh. I think I've just been drawn to it ever since. So when I started yeah, screen printing in a shop, working for shops, 
taking the film, creating the screens, burning the screens, and watching the outcome on the press after setups, mm -hmm. and then watching the finished product, I was sold. I was like, this is rad. This is Hell pretty much yeah. what I want to be doing. So, Well, now, I so so you you went through the process of learning screen printing, right? But but I, I mean, I'm aware maybe they're not, but you eventually you became a, a press tech, right? So you learned yes. screen printing there. How did you go from screen printing to becoming a press tech? So after working for um, a few companies over those first uh, few years of me getting into the screen printing industry, I was uh, recruited out of a shop that ordered a brand new 12 color gauntlet and back in like 2000. And um, they came and the, the, the M&R tech came up, installed the equipment. I assisted him with that, with the build of it. And you got to like assemble this thing. You got to, you know, deal with the electrical. You got to deal with, you know, he pretty much, I had no clue on how to do it, but mm -hmm. pretty much just worked along with him. And because I was mechanically savvy and um, knew my electrical pretty well, it went by pretty fast. So he was like, do you were like better than, you know, most assistants that I've ever had, like that worked right. for us. So it went by smoothly and that kind of like uh, stoked him out. So he went back to his home office down in anaheim and told his boss hey there's a guy up there slow we installed a press he's really good he helped me out you know and uh, seems like he'd probably be a good candidate for you know a, a new tech and he screen print yeah. so um offered me a awesome. job and I, I took it went down there and um started installing your equipment so when i started for mnr i was just a service tech so basically you install new equipment you do repairs, um, you replace parts, um, a lot of traveling, a lot of uh, driving around in Southern California because there's thousands of shops down there. Um, yeah. And the knowledge with screen printing, imaging, press, pre-press stuff, like darkroom stuff, how to code a screen, what to look out for, like with flash units, all that stuff. So it was kind of like I'd go and install this equipment for these people, but – also, the plus was that I can answer any screen printing questions, too, as far as, like, production, how to set it up, um, where should their machine be in relation to the dryer. Now, most equipment that you buy, the techs will tell you ahead of time, like, how to set up your shop. But yeah. You have, like, a, a tech that can go to your shop and say, hey, you know what? You want to burn these screens a certain way. You know, here's the best way to do it so that way you get better productivity going on. So it was kind of like... A cool. were, you the kind of, were you the kind of tech that could do that kind of thing? Because you had so much time in the printing industry, huh? Yeah, so, and so yeah. at that time, too, m and launched a, a really cool press called the, what, we, what they still sell now, The Sportsman, and yeah. they offered it in, like, six colors, eight colors, and a ten color. And there was a lot of entry-level manual shops that were buying auto equipment, and they would buy this Sportsman, and they didn't really have any experience other than what they've seen on – you know, videos or whatever, or at a mm. shop that had one. So it was kind of cool and um, rad to have someone go in and install this piece of equipment and then show them how to use it and operate it and yeah. get trained up. Because you, you, as a tech, you only have like two, three days at the most, four days if you stretch it out to do the install and get in, get out, and then have like a good half of the day to do some training. So to have that person so there with the knowledge was like huge for them. Yeah, and so at that time you were installing. Were you installing a lot of new? Uh, I'm sorry, new stuff, or just were you new also stuffs. repairing? Okay. So just new stuff on the installs. Yeah. Um, you move a lot of old equipment. Existing equipment mm -hmm. shops would like move. They get a new location. Big print shops. So you tear down their old stuff, and then help them move. Uh, they would move all their own stuff, and you'd go to the new location set up all the existing equipment they had at the previous shop and then new equipment would come in and then we would hit that too, install that stuff. So you saw a lot of like shops like growing and then some shops just closing where yeah they were going to sell their stuff and you tear it down and get it ready for creating for the customer who's going to buy it. So it was a little bit that's of a, a, That's actually a nice transition into the topic of you. So you did ex – you were you have had your hands in the process of taking an old press that's been used. It could have a million impressions on it, and it, possibly moving it to another shop, whether it was the same shop or selling it and installing it at a different shop. What this is kind of off of 
out of the series of questions I wanted to ask, but what were some of the problems that would come up, especially when you're tearing down an old used press and moving it into a another location? Yeah, so more or less, like after I stopped working for m and I was still um, operating as an independent tech for a few other techs that were out there that were independent techs. And um, we would move used equipment from one shop to another or we would help someone move something that they were buying from an existing shop that was getting new stuff and we would go and tear it down and then move it um sometimes some shops have equipment in there that they don't really have like a very good like maintenance crew or someone that's gonna like take care of the press or maybe they just don't know like what parts can be replaced so the common things that you would see that were like kind of like crappy on the print heads far as mm-hmm. uh, were print heads not working. Um, okay. Sensors uh, that weren't operating correctly to read uh, other sensors to make that print head actually work. So they would just ditch that print head. So they would have ah. an eight color press that had two heads that didn't work. And so then they would have a six <laughs> color press with right. flashes. So you would, huh. you would see some equipment that needed some work to it and some TLC, but it's uh it's really wasn't like much so you'd get it to the other shop do a parts yeah. list and get them the right parts and you have them up and running in less than a day or that day okay so i'm actually i'm gonna circle back to that more dude we keep kicking your feet on the skype so hang tight here <laughs> um i, I want to circle back to that because it's actually an important question but um sure you know we're just i think it's time to just move on into uh talking about used equipment right i mean yeah the industry is ripe with manufacturers trying to sell us new stuff, right? You right. want a new press, it's not hard to buy one, right? I mean, they'll even finance you on this shit when you have no business financing it. But what I really want to talk about is some of the benefits of going used. Especially, yeah, just what are the benefits of going used as opposed to buying something new, in your opinion? Um, well, <laughs> it like I said... In our in our case, um, it was more of like a financial thing. So um, we knew that like going into it new, you got to have more money down. You got to be able to finance something at a higher rate. And um, it would have been cool to have like a brand new ten color, um, but we would have been had a higher payment, and mm-hmm. we just uh, felt that that there was more used equipment out there that was available. And available through um, the brokers enough to finance something that was used. So, being a tech, I knew that I can get myself into a used press that was mediocre uh, in condition, and I could take care of it and run it. Now, in our case, we got a fully refurbished MR piece of equipment from a company that was out in uh, Jersey that uh, screen printers, re, uh, screen printing products um, found us. Um, there was a bunch of machines that came out of a shop and um, that one fit us the best uh, as far as the details on it and what we needed. And so they found this press for us and they told us, okay, it's gonna be four weeks um, for us to get it refurbished. They're gonna re, uh, rebuild the print heads, redo all the air valves, uh, electrical lines, sensors, brand new servo motor. And that's huge. That's like, so we basically that's got a, a brand new press refurbished, yeah, yeah. uh, from a certified factory refurbishing company through screen printing products, um, and had it delivered installed in less than two days. And we were up and running and printing. So, um, cool. it's, it, the benefit for it, I think, for people that are thinking about getting used, if you're out looking and you don't know what you're looking for, mm-hmm. it's still okay because you're just looking. But in the meantime, while you're looking, do the research. Do the pros and cons. All air, pneumatic versus servo. What does the servo motor cost on this particular model I'm looking at? Rather, it's TOS or MHM or m and or whatever it is out there that you're looking at. For sure, do your research because you want to know like what you're getting and what you're going to get yourself into. And if you feel that you're the kind of person, the business owner or the shop owner um, that wants to run something that's going to be easier to maintain, then then uh, stick with uh, those parameters. Um, don't go outside so, your comfort zone on that for sure. In in regards to to um, 
a used a used press, something that you're going to be buying used. Uh, let's say you're comparing an all air press to a, a press that has a servo either on the indexer or something like that. Which one from a maintenance standpoint is easier to maintain for, for your average Joe, for just your mechanically inclined uh, screen print shop owner? Um, like far as like a used one? Yeah, just, yeah, uh, between all air and one that has like, let's say some servo parts in it, which one is easier to maintain between the two of them? Um, and to work on and to repair. I would say all air because, I mean, if you mm -hmm. can get an all air press, um, air indexer, air heads, stroke cylinders, that meaning the print heads when they go forward and back, um, you want to be able to, like, you know, maintain an, a full, you can maintain a full air driven press a lot easier than you can with all electric. Now, Dang. servo print heads and servo indexers, they're, they're a little bit pricier to uh, to fix, so okay. um, you're just you're t you're talking like, you know, a couple thousand I mean, I dollars versus a couple hundred dollars here and there per print head. So um, mm. it could add up. I lost and cam for some reason. <laughs> you can't see me, or no? I, I clicked oh. on something on accident, like a like a dummy. Uh, well, we still hear you, so it's yeah. all good. Well, now, why would a printer, a, a person just getting into the industry, choose? servo i mean servo is all the rage now but why do you why does a screen printer need that instead of all air i mean air seems to be an antiquated concept nowadays right so the the difference there is just the volume you're going to be able to kick out um if you're running an all air indexer machine i mean you're talking like depending on the machine so if you got like a 12 color air machine versus a, a six color small load air machine the, the volume difference is going to be a little bit different. You're going to be able to kick out more, obviously, because you got a bigger machine. You can load more shirts, and the index is going to be a little bit bigger. So you're going to be able to adjust that air velocity coming from that air indexer to shift the press around. So uh, with a servo motor, I mean, you're talking like anywhere between like average to 600 to 800 dozens an hour on on the majority of presses um uh -huh. that have servo motors so i mean it's a big it's a big difference but it just depends on how you're willing to like you know are you johnny on the spot with your jobs everything's lined up you're just like lock and load you got your tri lock you got a killer registration system you're not wasting any time and you're just you're flying and you, you need that so uh -huh. um with an air machine i mean i i personally i think that if people are gonna like weigh the pros and cons i mean you're going to get more volume out of a servo press hands down yeah if you can afford that but at the same time if you're if you have a 12 color all air indexer print heads and all that stuff you're still going to get good adequate print production out of it okay well how about let's just say you're a shop i mean you can even let's use my shop as an example and your pri your priority is not speed it's just to maybe take some pressure off the guys, you know, or you're t trying to take a little pressure off yourself. Uh, your, your elbows are wearing out. Uh, but you're on a budget. Right. It, air, it, air is a perfectly suitable solution, and it's going to save you on, in terms of cost. Right. So yeah. that's, that's the um, – I think really strongly on this when people are going to buy something used or they're going to start getting in the automatic uh, printing. If you don't have that financial like um, resource to go new and if you're going to get used um, and if you're like I said it just if if you're an owner and you don't you're not mechanically savvy on some of the electrical stuff uh, go all pneumatic because you could buy a pneumatic press first run it for a couple years or a year. And if you're kicking ass and you're like, Hey, we're ready for something faster, you know, you can yeah. sell that one or find another one add it and then sell the other one later. And then you, you'll see the difference in the print production. I mean, Hell yeah. our press runs like smoothly at 600 dozens an hour. See, and okay. we can bump it up to 800 dozens an hour or even faster than that if we wanted to. But when it's all said and done, you know, 
it's wear and tear on the, the, the loader, the catcher, the person, you know, yeah, yeah. in a hurry, you know, you, you're, if you have a good team, you're going to, you're going to run that machine to its potential for sure. And you can't, right. if it's servo and you can do that with a, with an air, all air driven machine too. I've seen it done. Like I've seen amazing shops do amazing prints and still get that five to 600 dozens an hour, just running smooth. Like, Clear. But in your opinion, is flashing, doing wet on wet, yeah. all that stuff. I mean, a lot of this, the big print shops that are still in the United States and some God in South it. America still have all air driven machines. So. Yeah. And that's that. That's really the ultimate question. I, I think especially when people are just transitioning from a manual to an auto, the quality, you can achieve the same print quality and consistency with air or servo. Right. Right. It just depends on ultimately the speed you're trying to push out of that press yeah the the, the pieces per the dozens per hour right That's and really what i've learned from the past like working for other people there was one shop i worked at where the guy was like okay the integrity of the artwork and the print is everything if you got to slow this thing down to make it work and engineer it to where it's going to print nice and we don't have to like waste any time like trying to fix things then yeah. I'm all about it. We're it's actually faster to yeah, slow it down there, and do it right. The other guy yeah. was like, you know what? We got to have everything lined up right. Everything's got to be engineered so we can print fast, so we can get the jobs in and out of here, mm -hmm. uh, like that. You know, we got to blow through X amount of large run jobs per day. So, uh, right. having to experience both worlds, like it could be done. It, you just yeah. got to have the good team. And so, for. And I'll say this, for all the shops that are out there that feel like, oh, we only have two, three people working for us, it's cool because guess what? Auto, fully electric, servo, or all air driven, you can run a machine by yourself, load and pull, and then catch the job too if you want to. You could blow through 600 shirts by yourself on yeah. any press. You just got to set it up that way. You got to like get like yourself it. geared up just like when you guys are printing your large manual job you know when you're gonna have to step in and help it's a nightmare yeah, the yeah second person because you know what it's gonna take to mm -hmm. further it along when there's a little bit of dragging point there in your production uh, so and um so everyone needs to understand too you work to the best of your abilities don't mm -hmm. go outside your comfort zone because you get this new press or used press and you're like yeah i got fucking servo motors we're going to be cranking yeah. them out. They say 800 dozens an hour, and then you got that learning curve. And then there's things that aren't, like, working yeah. because you've forgotten a few things. So there's there's a lot to um, consider there when you're, when you're thinking that, either air or servo. Or is, servo. And that actually leads into the next question very well. Uh, I'm going to read this one, so it's going to feel a little scripted. But uh, <laughs> a small printer that has never owned – let alone worked on an automatic press is about to to make their first purchase okay they're looking at let's say a used six color eight station press automatic uh, from your experience is there a checklist or things that they maybe need to consider before making that purchase before pulling the trigger rather it's new or used oh uh, let's say it's used 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 yeah there's there's a not a very big checklist. There's just like, um, I would say the basic few questions that you want to ask. Um, there could be five, there could be 10 maybe I would say, but the basic ones that I would look out for is, um, first how old the machine is. Okay. okay. Cause you're going to want to know the condition of the press. Um, if it's sight unseen, you want to look for, um, the condition of the print heads. You want to make sure that, um, 90% of the machine runs. If you're 60 and 70% of the machine doesn't run, meaning that you got like two or three print heads that haven't been run in like a few years, then there might be uh, a reason why. Uh, and it could be a couple parts they didn't want to replace or they just couldn't afford it or maybe they just didn't know how to fix it. So those are some key things to find out. And it could be something that you could probably fix yourself. You know, once someone looks at it and figures out, you know, maybe this guy didn't want to fix it, but I can. So okay. um, you want to check the press. You want to look into what's working, what's not working. You want to look into like uh, pretty much the pallets. The pallets, you want to make sure that they're level and they're printing level before you even get it because you can re-level the pallets to the print heads mm -hmm. 
but you want to make sure that no one's ran a forklift into the print arm or something and it's mm. like it's bent but they don't know it's bent because the guy that yeah. bent it didn't tell them and it's like fucking been running all weird and they, oh yeah oh, it's no. been running like that forever so you just want to know what to look for in those things so the does that mean you need to buy that you can only buy something that is running if, it, if it's been torn down and it's sitting on on a pallet somewhere is that risky totally risky because you, if you don't you have video do or photographs of this thing running within the last week or okay. a month of them running it and they have proof and there's a date on the actual video in the in the pictures, move on. Because there's Stip. there's good dime a dozen out there. You'll find somebody that will shoot a video for you, no problem. Because if someone wants to sell a good piece of equipment, mm -hmm. they're going to want to sell it and they want to get good value for it so if it's up and running and they're running a job on it and you could see it with your own two eyes and you can you know go to uh an outsource tech or mnr tech or a mhm tech or whoever it is that you're buying the equipment for and put eyes on it and email them the okay. photos and the videos and just check it out because i mean it's, that's that's an interesting tidbit right there so you're saying find an an outsource tech and and have them take a trip out to the place and look at it. It's worth it. It's definitely okay. Worth it. You're talking to, you're talking about like on the high end on some of these things, some of these machines. You're you're looking to spend thirty five to forty thousand mm -hmm. on a piece of equipment to finance something like this. You want to make sure you're buying something that works. Yeah, and they can now, what be a, reassembled and and uh, mm -hmm. operate the way you want it to when you get it there. Mm -hmm. Good so, to know. All right. Uh, uh, checklists, here, checklists are important, and the air, the air going into the machine, you got to have a good compressor, and you ten horse. Yeah, that, that's that's one of the questions. So the compressor, what what have you seen? Is especially with an all air press, they're going to have a much higher air requirement, right? right. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure like ten to twelve horsepower should be pretty okay. good. Eight okay. horsepower, uh, it's kind of pushing it. You got to have a chiller, a little air chiller box that the air goes through and it cools yeah, yeah. It down takes some moisture out you want to make sure all those components are all good and if they ran the machine without one yep don't get it because it's, 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 it's been out. damaged yeah. i mean all air pneumatic machines they need uh like a, a certain oiling system that goes into the air system to oil uh -huh. all the seals and everything that's like working the valves up and down and, and you know opening and shutting and that's what's going to keep the duration of that press if it's all pneumatic huh. it'll last longer and there's there's maintenance to be done too there's there's daily maintenance there's weekly maintenance and there's monthly maintenance depending on the press okay. uh, we try to keep up with the weekly and monthly maintenance uh for huh. sure um there's stuff that you want to do like every six months i always go around and clean all the bearings underneath and put new grease on them and um the bearings that are on the top of the carousel where it goes up there's a clevis fork and the bearing goes up and it sticks in there and it holds the registration that stuff's yeah. important educate yourself on how this machine registers and how it indexes because you'll get an understanding on what is functioning and what's not functioning and what's important for you during the purchase of that equipment and, and before they tear it down and send it out yeah. to you. So yeah, there's those things are important, you know, the air, the compressor, all, all that, that shit. Stuff. So, and that, that's a good question or leads into the next one, which is what are the things that the printer is going to need to have in place before they automate the compressor, the square footage, just a quick list, some things off the top of your head. Yeah. So you, if <clears throat> say, if you're looking for an auto, small press, one. it's like, Six, six, eight, 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 ten, something like that. Yeah, you, you want to like, you want to make sure your square footage in your shop's at least like eleven to twelve hundred square feet. You can fit a nice little size dryer. You can fit like a good size press in there, up to an eight color. You just gotta make sure it's gonna fit. Get measurements of the press. Figure out the actual outside dimensions of the press. Some are like ten feet. Some are eight feet. Some are twelve feet, thirteen, fourteen feet. That's important. When we moved into this shop, mm -hmm. we measured like probably like eight times. Yeah. And then some because I was like, oh, okay, I, you know, uh, I want to make sure it's going to fit. So, yeah, yeah. Especially if you're looking for a building and you got equipment coming, find out what the overall dimensions of that press and the dryer 
And then where you're going to put your compressor? Do you just landlord want it outside where it can get fucked with, or do you want to put it inside, but it's going to be noisy? You know, that's yeah, yeah, like that. that's so a good point. People make it work. You know, you you just gotta, yeah. um, yeah, for sure. You want to make sure that you're going to have the space in the room uh, for your auto press. You know, um, yeah, and then the location for the compressor. Make sure that yeah. there's not going to be any noise ordinances or any of right. that kind of shit. Okay. Yeah, and the closer um, you have your compressor to the vicinity where it's going to be hooked up to is essentially better because then it's not pumping a bunch of air like 30, 40 feet down the building just to get to your uh, to your machine. So typical machines are, are running off like 110 uh, PSI. So okay. uh, CFMs, I don't can't remember it off the top of my hand uh, head, but it's like Probably like forty. I'm guessing. I could be wrong, but it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Um, do you think that, like, a, if you're considering automating for the first time, that a printer needs to? I've always heard throughout the industry that you need to get the dryer first. You need to have this huge dryer to handle that monster that's going to be churning out way more garments than you used to. Or can you kind of deal with the dryer you got and learn how to use the auto first and then that, upgrade the dryer? Yeah, I mean the. I don't know what size dryer you're running in your shop. What size is it? Is it like it's like a six foot chamber, twenty four wide. Chamber. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, <clears throat> with an automatic press, like you can run up to an eight color on that machine. You just got it. Mm -hmm. If you have adjustable like IR dryer, meaning if it's infrared, if it's all black panels on the inside, and then they heat. You can lower the the print the heating elements if you're able to on those dryers. You can lower them and slow down the belt a little bit. And you could do water based discharge fine with it. We had a really small dryer when we um, okay. had our our Diamondback that we had. It was a seven color, okay. And, and we whooped it on that thing. It was like your ass like, on it. Fleece. It was all electric. Yeah, all right, all electric. Bro. And we were doing like God discharge and water based on that thing. And people reps would come in. They're like, "Whoa, how are you <laughs> curing this?" Like, I'm, yeah, yeah. We got it. Yeah, down. there's a lot of there's a lot of strange misconceptions, man. Like I, yeah. I've heard there's we could go about we could go on on that shit all night, but yeah, yeah, you can you can pull it off. But that's the real question. I think a lot of a lot of new printers get caught right. up on on all the equipment that you supposedly need, but yeah. you can do it piece at a time. You can right. work your way and, into things. And just know know what you got, the volume you got. If you're a manual shop and you're seeing like a bunch of like. 1500 piece runs and you know yeah. that you're going to need that machine to kick them out you can adjust the speed of your machine and the speed of your dryer and the heat without damaging the actual material so right. Right. there's right. a little bit of thinking that goes along with it it's 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 more or less like you got it you got to do your research you just got you got to go out and you got to get the information because it's all out there and yeah. the more you read about it the more you what you're you know, figure out the brand of your dryer, your existing dryer, the speed, you know, all that stuff. And then you can go to whoever the tech is or whoever you're buying the used piece of equipment or new. And you can tell them, here, this is my dryer. I want to get a machine first. We want to make this work. And somebody's okay. going to show you how to make it work. So if not, call me and I'll, I'll tell you. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, and then as far as the used press options, like so – and. I, I think the point of this to me and, and the information that I'm just trying to get across as best as I can is, uh, f especially for some of these n these new people like myself that have been running a few years and they're trying to increase production, but they don't want to go crazy. You know, They want to make sure that they can keep the doors open. For sure. But you're looking at used. Um, maybe, in your opinion, a good press, manufact the manufacturer, the year, and maybe even a brand or a couple different model numbers that are good entryways into automation, in your opinion. Hopefully you understood what I just said. Yeah, no, it's um, entry-level presses out there for automated if you're going used. Um, I mean, personally, I just I stick with M&R just because, uh, I mean, f dude, it's – Hands down, they, they make and they made the raddest equipment, and it yeah. fucking works, dude. It's, they got a track record, right? It's, they got a long it's run such track a good record. record. I mean, thousands and thousands of shops throughout the world just really pump out these really cool like garments. And there's 
shops that have MHM and Toss and Anatol. I mean, I've seen some badass shit come from Anatol. I'm like, wow, yeah. dude. And Workhorse, uh, that company too. I mean, <laughs> I know there's probably good, some, yeah. <laughs> some M and R fans or techs yeah. or maybe some reps. They're gonna hear me say this, but I mean, if if I had the right uh, deal going, I'd probably get one of those. Uh, <laughs> the workhorse the, makes a, a pretty cool machine. The uh, tough, the, the 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 little all air machine and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, no, yeah, yeah. is it workhorse? Yeah, it's um, dynamic sells those machines. Uh, I don't know. I forget what yeah. the what the what the the name of the models are, but they they're pretty cool and they look okay. like they're affordable and they're sturdy and they're American made. So, uh, okay. Well, that's what I got to say about M and R, especially, especially the '90s era, like the Gauntlet. Is it? It kind of reminds me of that old tractor. Like you could just tell. There's, it's so s simplistic in the way it runs. Yeah. Right. I mean, like, like there's a, there's a certain simplicity and elegance to it, and it just you can work on it. You look at it and you go, oh, I can tell. Like that's where yeah. you replace that. The the original owner of M and R and the original like. Um, engineers and the guys that design those presses um they go way back and i i know i know some of the like the the just the basic history enough to know that those guys put their heart and soul in designing that index carousel and the way the print heads operate and move and um i'm proud to say that i've worked on some of the like the first pieces of equipment that ever came off the mnr floor um, yeah. When I was working for m and I went and did service work for um, a screen printing shop called New Age Designs. And um, there was a gentleman there. Um, he's old school, and he had all these m and pieces of equipment, flatbed printers, uh, belt dryers, old gauntlets. He had the, one of the first old m and like, eight color, or I think it was a six color, six color gauntlet that m and ever made. Uh, on his floor and he walked me over and showed me how to replace a Mosier cylinder which is the oldest air indexer that drip was like driving these indexers around back then yeah and, um, it's kind of a unique thing you know watching that machine he kept that thing pristine it was like it just left the factory floor so yeah uh, th they're they're stout man they last yeah forever. they're nice in yeah. fact I'm uh going to be inquiring um, a press myself, a six-color press um, from uh, one of our viewers from your uh, from your vo from your your um, podcast. He got a whole mean yeah, yeah. machines, and I'm excited to get it because it's going to be worth yeah. it, the money because it's going to run forever, and you, yeah, yeah. you can still run them. They're just, they're just rad machines. So I've seen some old toss machines that I've seen like – in the corner of shops and people are like yeah we don't really use that machine we just use it for like simple one and two color stuff and i'm like well uh -huh. you know but that m and r over there it's it's running all it's day always day. running yeah and I, and I think they have the added benefit of being not not a whole lot of proprietary parts like you can buy replacement parts at the down the at the hardware store at your granger and right it's yeah, easier to work on them. Yeah, some of the bolts and stuff and the hardware yeah. you can probably get anywhere but the specialty parts like the cylinders um, oh, those are specific. Yeah, you 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 go through M and R to get those, and they have them. They have them. They have updated parts. They're always in stock. stock. Yeah, you can call yeah. right now and order parts for and uh, rebuild your own press if you wanted to for like really cheap, dude. You just got. Yeah, I think that's actually what I think I'm gonna do for the channel, dude. I think I'm gonna buy a little automated, some kind of six six eight, and I'm gonna do a full rebuild and then document it kind of deal. So there's, that's where I'm gonna go with it. There's probably a few companies out there that would jump on board with you on that. I mean, yeah. if not, they they probably you know it's it. There's the used market, and then there's brand new, and there's yeah. enough customers for everybody to go around because there I feel the industry's taken off. Um, mm -hmm. Rather, it's small mom and pop shops, DIY people, people want to start off in their garage. They get it, twelve thousand or twelve hundred square foot shop, and they feel good about doing the volume to the they're doing and they're looking for yeah. used equipment. So, yeah, yeah. And that's, I think the whole point of this is, uh, well, hopefully guys print fam, we we're just kind of educating you on the idea that if you're considering automating, uh, the point to me is that it's not so far out of reach. I mean, 
if you start shopping new equipment, you're going to go, mm, oh, shit, you know, you're 60, 70, 80 grand in, in the hole. But right. There are more affordable options for you. And I think that that's just what I'm trying to get across here is, yeah. is, is the best, as best as we can. And, you know, Rob here, he's been working on them forever. And uh, he's here to, you know, you're here to say that it can, you can work on them. You can fix them easily. Yeah. And a lot of things you could do yourself if you have even the smallest amount of mechanical inclination. You can make your dreams come true with something that's like, just needs a little bit of TLC. And, just a little um, TLC. Yep. And if you got the right resources to make it happen, you can you can do it. I just wanted to give a shout Love out it. to my kid. He's watching this right now. He's <laughs> He's a bad kid. He's seven years old. His name's Andrew Salazar. And I love you, kid. You're like my best friend. I just want you to hear me say that on YouTube. There you go. Shout out to Andrew Salazar, <laughs> man. Thanks for watching, dude. Yep. Um, and guys, I, hopefully that was uh, educational for you. What we're going to do, though, is I'm going to keep Rob here on the line. And we're going to move on to the Q&A portion of this sucker. So go ahead and start submitting your questions in the chat. And I'm going to do my best to relay them to Rob and then... Actually, I'm, I'm going to probably pretty much let him take the floor on the Q&A uh, because it's not every day that we have a guest. Uh, but I'll chime in, too, if, if I feel like it's necessary. But start feeding me your questions. And if they're not in the chat, then I'm going to move into the Facebook group and get questions there. Uh-oh, Jimmy Johnson threw us a, uh, a nice little super chat. Thanks, Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson, Johnson sounds like a NASCAR race car driver. Yeah, Jimmy Johns, baby. <laughs> uh, let's see where the questions start. Let's throw my films here. Hey, Grizzly Wheeler. What's up, bro? Glad you're here. Um, Grizzly Wheeler. I'm just going to shout the man out because he prints for uh, this really killer design firm called Lincoln Design Company. Dude, they're, they're so good. And he's the fortunate man that gets to print for them. Some bitch. That's a good gig right there, dude. Um, guys, yeah, start feeding your questions in here. Rye Beats can't pay attention because he's wasted. Good job, buddy. Uh, hey, uh, Rob, uh, this, this yeah. is just kind of a question out of the blue. Do the older... All pneumatic presses still tell you like your pieces per hour. Do they have any of that information on them? The older yeah, ones? they do. Um, so our press, it has the old style like control system that just tells you when it indexes. So it'll index like it'll tell you how fast you're going. So it'll say dozens per hour. Um, mm -hmm. So when you're doing like say if you're doing a double hit on something, it indexes over a double hit, indexes over. It's gonna be half the amount so it'll tell okay. you like what you're doing like per hour so if, it, cool. if it's saying you're doing like uh 20 dozens an hour you're doing 200 shirts an hour if you're doing right, 50 right. dozens an hour you're doing 500 shirts an hour so gotcha uh, pretty it's pretty accurate i mean pretty accurate and your flash time too is going to make everything so um hell yeah important. yeah good to know yeah someone asked that in the chat if, if it does index on the older one so good 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 yeah. good uh, just working my way down, man. There's a, a good place. Okay, so this is from Imagination Apparel. Question's really simple. What's a good place to locate used automatic presses? Um, for sure, I would start with screen printing products. Um, they have a blog spot that you can go through and you can see the physical machines that you're inquiring. Um, you can also email both Brian and Dave McLean. Um, it's a family run business and they are constantly getting used equipment through, uh, their system, um, especially automatic equipment, folding, mm -hmm. bagging machines, flashes. They make their own flashes by the way. So I want to oh, cool. let everyone know if you're looking to get flashes, um, uh, mm -hmm. for both your manual or auto, they got some pretty cool shit. They're all okay. quartz bulbs and they work killer i'm thinking okay. about getting one myself here in the near future but uh, for sure screen printing products hands down like uh, we'll put a we'll put a link in the description for screen printing products we'll put yeah. a, a link in the description of this thing guys but if you're just listening screenprintingproducts.com yeah okay perfect right. uh this is an interesting question i'm gonna let you answer this for sure dude so it says how this is from andy smith how do you deal with discharge ink smell 
He tested some discharge a few weeks back, and smell made him want to throw it away. Uh, obviously, dealing with it is one thing, but how do you manage ventilation and stuff like that, Rob? It just smells like a fart altogether, dude. Yeah. Well, it's for like rotten egg. <laughs> but, uh, yes, it does. you know, it's it, some shops will vent their shops out. They'll exhaust, put in exhaust fans. It'll pull the air out. What I do is I, like, I'll, I'll mix everything. And then it's the activator kind of that stinks too, but after you're printing with it, I mean, you're going to get that like discharge release from the garment. The moisture is going to hit the air when it heats, especially with garments that have a lot of moisture in them. If they come shipped with like in the bags and you got to unpack them. So you're going to see more of that smell yeah. from those garments. But I mean, there's really no way around it. I mean, actually, it's not really that bad. But yeah, I think the smell is actually an indicator too. It's uh, you know, yeah, the stuff that the stuff that's lethal isn't the problem, but you just have to work uh, to ventilate it. Like we have a, we have an entrapped. We don't have any fresh air, so we just put duct work up in our thing, and we created a suction system that tries to pull the air out, and it works okay, and you can do it fairly affordably. Right. So <laughs> just yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, yeah, but dude, if you're dealing with it, it does smell like shit. But just do what you can to ventilate it, man. Right. Get some air, get some fans blowing from the back of your your space. Yeah. And get another fan sucking it into some kind of open window or door you know, or garage. Or you something. know what we actually do? We've been running fans like little square box fans on the floor of our shop, and it helps circulate go. the air like around the the room. So it kind of that that we we do that when we clean our inks. Uh, yeah, out of yeah. the screens too, just to get some of that that VOC out um, of cool. the air. So yeah, I mean, try a few things. Tip. You know, yeah, but you do. I mean, at the end of the day, with discharge, man, it is formaldehyde. So you do want to try to ventilate it to the absolute as, as best as you can out of your shop. You want to, yeah. But yeah, dude, the smell is an indicator that it's you know that it's working. It. Yeah, and you need to evacuate that air somehow. So figure out how to evacuate it. Just good, uh, good ventilation. One fan. There you go. Plenty. Where? Uh, nose pins. Oh, go ahead. There you go. Nose pins. <laughs> Close pins work. For sure. Where am I at here, man? I'm lost. I'm so lost in this chat. Here we go. Um, any helpful tip? Okay, we're back to water base. This is from Andrew Ferris. Any helpful tips to printing water based or discharge specifically on an automatic? Um, well, I think the key things to really like look out for is like how you're preparing your screen. Make sure you have a dual cure emulsion or a water based, uh, proof emulsion or something that's discharge proof, um, blocking out the screen, doing a post exposure, uh, meaning that you block out your screen, um, post expose it either outside or in your exposing unit with no vacuum table and then, um, rinse it off to activate it. To harden it, or you can use a hardener. Uh, you can spray hardeners on the inside and on the back side of your screens, and then um, just make sure you're flooding. You keep your screens flooded in the front position on your press because you want to keep that open area wet. Uh, There's a that's a good question. Do are there is there a specific model of automatic press like in the 90s that had the back flood on the on the um. That has the setting to where it'll it'll back flood this you know so that it floods the the fucking image with ink. Yeah, so they, a particular all, they model? all do because the, okay. when okay. believe it or not when M and R started, for instance, Oops. there was a lot of water based and discharge printing going on, like a fucking oh, that, shit. That era. They were doing yeah. shit like all day long. So they designed the, their machines to be in the front position, so it would flood and it would stay in the front position and it would chop down and ready to print and then it would flood forward. So. Um, you're probably going to find a lot of presses out there that have that option um, okay. used. So, yeah, you just got to look okay. out for them. Make sure that some some don't, but okay. you, you'll know. That's a good question to ask, you know, when you're buying that shit. Hey, I do a lot of water-based oh. discharges of flood forward. Is, can I keep okay. my inks flooded? So, yeah. Good, good information. Yeah, dude, this is this is going splendidly this time, bro. These are good questions, too. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The good shit. Uh, here, here's another one. This is from... Uh, indigenous graphics says okay uh, on the topic of garments what are five good types of shirts to print on male and female trying to be ready next month when we open on the res with my tribe bishop uh okay don't know what it says but yeah t-shirts what are, what are some of your favorite brands to print on 
Um, right now we're we're you know anything pretty much 100 percent cotton. So mm. the weight of the shirt is everything. Um, you want a medium weight. You want something that's over four ounce between under six and four. Um, mm. We find that a five ounce shirt right now is pretty adequate for yeah. discharge and water base. Um, blends are iffy. You got to mess with it. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it does work. It just depends on the material involved with the blend. So, I mean, I can go on for an hour about blends and it's night and day, but stick with hundred percent cotton. Um, right now, cotton heritage, they make a rad shirt. Check them out. Yeah. Go online. Yeah, it's a pricing. All style makes a killer shirt. They have their, uh, ultimate, uh, middleweight yeah. shirt that's bitching the discharge um yeah they're the all style is kind of the staple in the streetwear game you know they were yeah. really the one where it all started for sure yeah all right so, this actually leads into another good question this is a good question from jimmy johnson he gave us a super chat and i almost missed it but I, I don't know if you have any experience with this i don't but he's just he's inquiring about brown's all electric press it's, it's been around a long time that press but are you familiar with it Mm, heard the about brown, it. The I, don't, brown. I don't you know i'm trying to think like it's like the I've first all it. servo it has servo everything there is no air right don't don't know anything about it okay yeah. can't is it an it. oval machine or is it a like a, a carousel indexer it's a carousel yeah. yeah it it was all servo though it's it's got mixed reviews depends on who you talk to right. I th i've heard some, from what i've heard again i can't speak from any level of experience on it but i've heard that the people that don't have one hate them, but the majority of the people that actually have them and use them, they like them. They like them a lot. So if you're getting a good price on one used, you know, yeah, I'd probably give it a shot. Right. As long as everything's working well. But again, dude, if people that don't have them, some people say they're kind of ugly and this and that. So I don't know. If you can make it work and you can get it yeah. in your shop for low dollars <laughs> exactly yeah and the nice thing about it is as long as it's in good working order you wouldn't have to deal with the compressor situation yeah which could be a bonus you know right i think another thing with them that i've heard again not speaking from experience is that they have a, a fairly short stroke so you can't do very long images on them oh bummer but you might need to double check on that i don't know yeah. for sure something to look into yeah definitely look into it um let's see what we got okay Wet the screen after post. So he wants us to talk more about post exposing. Wet the screen after. Okay, yeah, because you said you mentioned something to it that piqued my interest, where you said right. after the post exposure, wetting the screen. So, like you know, like you coat a screen, you dry it, you air dry it, you mm -hmm. expose it, and after you expose it, of course, you wash it out because it's going to activate whatever is not getting washed out so mm -hmm. when you go to block out a screen i use the same emulsion to block out our screens yeah uh, that's what we do so yeah. that given to mind you want to actually um expose it cure it like you would yeah. cure a screen and then just hit it with water you can rub water on it and just activate it so it hardens and then you're good to go so interesting it's okay, uh it's an what, I've never heard that, it, but it's the most easiest and it's affordable. And now you don't have like five different fucking emulsions in your shop, which yeah, yeah, drove, like, that's drove myself nuts doing like a few years ago. I had something for for graphics. I had something for yeah. like water based graphics. I had something for like discharge water base. I had stuff for plastisol. I mean, it was like driving me it's nuts. too much to manage, man. It's too much to manage unless you have an entire screen department that's dedicated to the management of that stuff. It's better to find one. Yeah. maybe two emulsions yeah maybe. maybe you maybe you can do a uh another video cam um yeah i gotta i got i haven't i thought i dedicated something to emulsions. no you had a good one shit. i i thought okay. the way you did it uh with uh it was pretty rad i was like dude i gotta get some action going on with that man it's easier <laughs> it, is. it is dude <laughs> uh let's go on to the next one bob 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 oh no we already answered bob's question um Uh, prototype 8 has to bounce. Later, Prototype. Thanks for hanging, brother. Later, Holmes. Um, uh, dude, I think... Okay, so here, yeah, some people are chiming in on the brown. That they have some friends that have them, and they love them. So, yeah, I think the people that actually own them are usually pretty happy with them. 
That's uh, cool. Same with the Volt. I know Anatol takes a ton of flack in the industry, but it's from decades past. As far as I know, now they're you know they're on the ball and they have good presses too. I think most of the press manufacturers put out a good product in 2018, yeah, right? You know what I mean? It's how it's how you run them. It's yeah, your experience. You know, if you're a diligent like learning curve yeah. person, you're gonna make that press like whatever you get fucking work good. You know. Yeah. Hey, uh, so they're wondering what <laughs> what brand of emulsion are you using currently? Do you have a specific brand that you like? Oh man, dude, there's so many good ones out there, man. If I can use yeah. all of them and be able to afford to use all of them, there's so many. But right now, we're currently using um, the um, CCI's. Like they have a T okay. charge. No, it's yeah. uh, God. I'm having a blank. It's uh, T. I think it's the TX. I'll have to check. You know what's funny, bro? What you're, what's happening to you right there, right now? <laughs> I never gave a shit until I started doing the YouTube channel. That's yeah. when I actually started paying attention to the brand of stuff I use. It's, I didn't know the name of Murakami or Photo Cure Blue. Yeah, <laughs> my that, supplier just my that, supplier was like, "Oh, you want your emulsion? Okay." We mostly use we use um, Murakami's. Um, it's a HV, and then they have a HVP. And then they okay. have the photo cure blue. Now that shit is yeah. fucking hands down. Like you put a screen hardener on that, spray it on both yeah. sides. You can go discharge water base without having to activate the whole gallon or do a pint. I mean, their yeah. products are just gnarly. And uh, CCI good. has come a long ways too. They have like an emulsion for everything that you have and the shelf life is awesome. So I would, yeah. the, the TX has been working good for us. We're super satisfied with it. I can go from, Coat the same screens with the same emulsion, and if I want to burn a screen, do some posters and stickers mm -hmm. water, with my water-based inks. Psh. Can you use sol have you had bad experiences with solvent based, or do you print with solvent based graphics, graphic printing? Uh, I have solvent inks. Yes, I do solvent based stuff. And can you use the same emulsions, or does it hard? You know, does it like freeze use, it in there? You got to use a, a solvent based emulsion. Yeah, there's, it'll there's, freeze the shit in the screen, won't it? Yeah, that, and you'll uh, start catalyzing your ink with uh, okay. the emulsion. It just becomes a mess. So, oh, if you're working with solvent inks, use a salt uh -huh. base emulsion because the print's gonna look killer, anyways. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're if you're a shop out there and you do a bunch of like intricate cut pieces, like uh, aluminum pieces, and you're gonna like do some solvent base inks on there or some like heavy like printing on them, uh, use the high solvent. A high solid uh, solvent uh, emulsion, dual cures. Awesome, works great. Awesome, yeah. that's good piece of advice. Thanks, brother. Yeah, uh, I saw one here that was pretty good, and I think we'll probably wrap it up on this one. But I gotta find it. Um, seems like it. Well, nothing lost it. Okay, hey Cam, what would you say the best water-based ink is? I'm currently using Nasdar and I'm new to water-based. Dude, like honestly, uh, it, Rob, you can chime in here as well, man. Yeah, to I, me, all the pro in my opinion, this is just my opinion, they're all about the same. They, they are. all have they all have their version of a of a mixing system. They all have their versions of bases, activators, and bases activators. All that you stuff. you pick you pick the one that has I guess the best sales rep or just the best <laughs> whatever, dude. You, it's usually your decision is usually based Who on gives something you the most else free samples, you know. Right. <laughs> the ones that take care of you the best. Right now I've been getting a lot of love from CCI. They're, so I'm, yeah. you know, I tend to lean towards them, but actually in the water-based department, I use Matsui for a long time and I love their shit. I love their stuff. Yeah. It's, so it's I hear a lot of good, consistent, like, uh, good prints coming from the Matsui products and then, um, the Magna color stuff. I gotta tell you, yeah. we used it and it, it's a good system. It's awesome. Yeah. It's consistent. I mean, you can really do some halftone work with it, believe it yeah. or not, um, but the T charge series from CCI, it's tight. man. <laughs> I like the I like the convenience of it. It's dude. just rad all around. Yeah. It's easy to work with. I uh -huh. matched. I just eyeballed a color mixing a khaki color, which has been a pain in my ass. Yeah, dude, years. tans are the worst. I, I and hate so, tans. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> Jessica, who runs practically our shop, comes back uh -huh. and she goes, "Wow, you nailed it." 
And I was like, it? She goes, yeah, it's it's dead on. I was like, rad. We're I'm yeah, still, yeah. that was enough for me. We've been using it a lot lately. We used a lot of their whites, and okay. um, the blacks are super easy. I mean, it's like if you don't want to activate it, use that as a water base, and you can use it on like colored garments. It's that's that's and we do that with Matsui too. They don't market that as an option, but Matsui stuff can be used. Uh, like you could print their if you know it's not ideal, but you can print their discharge as water base without activating yeah. and it. And even all the plastic same. charge stuff, man. I gotta throw it now out that there. I'm doing a video on that, guys. You can Dude, look forward yeah. to the plastic charge. I'm gonna dive do it. in. It's fun. Yeah. It's cool because you can reuse all your fucking inks. I mean, yes. reds are gonna look yep. red, yellows are gonna look yellow, but man, it's just really cool what you can get out of recycled ink, man. It's really rad. All right, on man. Well, that was. I think that that was a pretty good place to end it, man. Do you have? Well, let's get you. Let's let you do all your shout outs, your Instagrams, your whatever you got. Just shout yourself out, man. Oh, oh me? Yeah, I just want to yeah, shout you. out. Like I said, just to my kid Andrew, and then of course Jessica Page. She let everyone know if you guys follow us on Instagram, you see all this cool shit we're doing. I mean, really, when it's at the end of the day, it it wouldn't go down unless. It was Jessica involved because she really runs the shop. She's talking to the people on the phone. She's doing work orders. She's like getting artwork squared away. She just pays our bills. I mean, she's doing everything. She wears many hats, and I'm really just the guy she's pulling with, the strings, bro. Yeah, I'm just the guy fucking with the broom in the back sweeping around. Shout out but to Jessica Page. Jessica Page. She's an amazing woman, and uh, yeah. And what's your what is your Instagram? Uh, the shirt peddler. Yeah, the shirt peddler at the shirt peddler. At the shirt peddler. Do yeah, you have a Twitter? No, I try Twitter, but nah, it's, not me, me I don't either. think it's alive it. anymore. Okay. And then uh, any, and then do you have like a Facebook page? Is it the shirt peddler as well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's at the shirt okay. peddler. All right. Sweet, man. Well, I think that that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Thank you so much, Rob. I feel like yeah. that went really well, dude. Yeah, thanks for having me again. It, w it went killer, and I'm glad to answer everyone's questions, and uh, it was stoked to be on here. I was stoked to be Yeah, that was that was fun, brother. So we'll yeah. talk to you later. Uh, let's go ahead and do the outro, guys. Cool. See you guys. Um, so you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us and interacting with myself and Rob. Hopefully there was a lot of good, useful information there for you. Uh, remember that we go live on the podcast every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So depending on East Coast or West Coast, those that time will fluctuate accordingly. I think on the East Coast, it could be as late as 11 but, uh, and then also you guys don't forget, man, I'm busting my ass uploading a video every day of the week until the end of March, maybe beyond, but I'm doing a bunch of work. So do me a favor and share the living shit out of my content. Help me get my subscriber count up. Help me get my view count up because it's important to me and I'm doing a lot of work there. So hook your boy up. Other than that, I feel like we nailed it, guys. So take care of yourselves, Print Fam, and we'll see you next week. Same damn time, same damn channel. Peace out. Don't know how to end it. Don't know how to end it.